Damarian Witten was one of them. Don't know if you guys have anything. Buckeye. He'll be a Buckeye. I mean, he released a top five. As long as Ohio State somehow doesn't change its mind, Ohio State's not going to pass on a Glenville guy that, uh, you know, as Glenville suddenly has become, you know, a target rich environment again. Though, though, I think that they'll, they'll land Damarian Witten as well as, uh, Bryce, West, excuse me, Bryce West. Justin Courtney believes the sheer volume of commitments. He's predicting close to 30 for Michigan is going to keep them higher in the rankings. Again, That's not, I how it works. Get... That's not how it works. Most recruiting rankings work on the top 20 guys in your class. So, I mean, what that means is that by having more than 20, you're going to, you'll drop your lowest guys or whatever, but you're just, you're not going to have, you're not, you just, you don't keep adding to it in, a class that has 30, which I don't, I mean, I think you can only really get to 28 to be quite honest, but uh, uh, you, you don't, you don't keep adding points. And honestly, in my opinion, I think average star ranking, if, if you're going to, if you're going to completely buy into recruiting rankings as the end all be all average star ranking means a lot more to me than, than, than total points in an equation. I look at offer lists on a lot of kids too. I mean, Ohio state does not meet with, you know, the recruiting services and sign off on what the rankings should be, you know, Michigan, Florida, whoever the hell doesn't, doesn't do that. And, you know, and I know sometimes offer lists can be deceiving because lo and behold, sometimes kids may embellish their recruit, their, their offer list. Lo and behold, you know, some slappy may not put like five offers on some kid's profile. So you don't see it. So you don't, you know, you don't necessarily know, but you know, I can sit there and I could look at somebody like uh, Elijah Moore, who just took an official visit to Ohio State, a wide receiver, 6'4", 190 out of uh, only Maryland, good counsel. I can tell you right now, he is not a three-star. He is not a three-star. He is, he is a top 125 at worst type of guy. I would probably have him in my top 100. And, you know, I can look at his offer list. I look at his tape and everything else. And while I'm not an evaluator and I don't I don't claim to play one on television, I, you know, I've been doing this long enough that, I, you know, I kind of understand how the process works and I kind of understand what what a three star looks like, what a four star looks like and what a five star looks like. So I don't necessarily always buy into the rankings when I see them. I try to do kind of my own homework I and, I and I've said this time and time again I would never want to be a national evaluator it is a thankless job how do you sit there and determine if this wide receiver is better than this defensive tackle in a numerical ranking uh you're splitting hairs but you know I certainly have my disagreements with the rankings when I see them I think those guys do a phenomenal job just considering the age of the player versus what their NFL counterparts are doing uh, with just a greater sample size when these guys are almost almost fully mature and playing like competition. Well, just to Justin's comment, and then I'll bow out on, on this and allow everybody else to talk. I'm taking all bets right now that Ohio State will be ranked higher than Michigan at the end of the recruiting cycle. Once we get through February signing day and everything else, and Ohio State finishes in December, we, we know that maybe they pursue one or two kids at the end. I'll take all bets. I'm I am that confident in it. I don't care what the rankings are. As long as as long as we agree upon criteria of what, you know, what it is. I mean, I know how all the formulas work to a certain extent. Ohio State is sitting four kids down in terms of total numbers at this point. Ohio State will have the higher ranked recruiting class, period. I saw somebody ask for um, something about the last time Michigan was in the top five or whatever. Last time they were in the top five of the composite class rankings was 2017 when they were five. Last time they were inside the top five was 2013 when they were four. Uh, I've gone back to 2010 and they don't get any better. So I'm um, trying to go back further, but 24 seven, the composite ranking sites beyond that um, aren't, aren't loading, but it's been a while since they've been inside the top five. That's why I, you don't expect it. Yeah. <clears throat> And the SEC always comes like they're they're conserving their energy, and then down the home stretch is really when they start to kick it in. Yeah, they start in October. I mean, that's when does Alabama really start giving a crap about recruiting? October, maybe November. I mean, it's just kind of how it you know kind of how it works out. And 
I think that uh, certainly the hope was that that's, oh, we're going to bring in an early signing period to kind of alleviate some of that. Well, then some genius decided that six weeks earlier was like an early signing period. The early signing period needs to be like in August, honestly, if you're going, if you're going to have one. And uh, by doing that, you're not necessarily helping Ohio State or you're not helping Alabama or whatever. You're helping some of these smaller schools that find a guy and getting them signed before they blow up their senior year. Yeah, Alabama has the number 13 class right now with eight commits, and three of them are five-star. So 